in this episode, we're talking about the eight week cohort and why you should be part of the next eight week cohort if you qualify. Mr. Juan Del Sol of Next Home Vista is here and he's going to be drilling me with some uh, hard questions, but let's see if I can get through this one. Perfect, let's uh, dive right into this cohort. Uh, tell us please, what is this passion project of yours? Because you seem to have a lot of energy behind it, a lot of time in creating this uh, a special place for business owners. So please tell us a little bit more about it to get things started. Thank you for sharing and thank you for asking the question. A, well, most people wonder what on earth is a cohort? So a cohort is a group of people coming together to answer one question. And that one question is, how can I build a profitable community as a business owner? And this eight week cohort is designed to expose a business owner to the infrastructure, the mindset, the process called Spark. And Spark allows you to drive your customers through the journey and to engage customers by teaching them how to be engaged through gamification. So that's the eight week cohort. Why I'm so excited about it is because over the years, I've done individual companies and showed them how to do it, done it for them in some cases, and saw how it could be profitable. On the opposite side, I've seen companies struggle. They're going well for the most part of the year, and then they hit a slow time or slow season in their company. And without a subscription base to carry them through, some companies sadly did not make it. And I'm passionate that I can help companies who want to be helped to develop a subscription based community that can carry them through the slow time and reduce their marketing dollars. That's wonderful. And who's the right audience or avatar that you would look forward to and have the most potential to maximize being part of this cohort and program? This is something that I often wondered because you can help so many people, but not so many people want help. It's the individual who has a service based business that they have recurring services people want and need. It's the brick and mortar location that has people coming in and they don't have an infrastructure to group those people together. It's the company that's established. They know who their target audience is and they're just looking for that audience to be concentrated. It's the individual who, or should I say company, it's the company who has their arms in social media. So they have their social media branding, but they don't have a place for that brand to be expressed. And more importantly, they don't have a subscription base where people want to pay. You've heard of loyalty programs for restaurants but you have not heard of a loyalty program for a business. It's there, but most people don't understand how it works or how to engage. So my avatar is the individual who is in the service-based industry, whether that be a minister who's looking to keep their parishioners online or to get them back in their building. It's the entrepreneur who is providing a service such as a lawn service and they have lawn customers but they don't have any maintenance contracts they don't have any way to group those individuals so that it can carry them through the slow season it's the coach most coaches are getting clients here and there when those clients drop off because they no longer need those services what are you doing to stay engaged with those clients? How are those clients continuing to benefit from you? So it's also the speaker. Most speakers, once they do a speaking role and share their topic, 
Now they're on the hunt. What happens if you have a community of individuals that you can tap into to reduce your ad spend? So instead of you going on the hunt, they're already in your community and they're picking you out or you're offering these services on a subscription basis. So it creates the proper OPEX for the company and it creates recurring ever revenue for you. And that would be the ideal customers. Well, perfect. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, one of the questions that most people will probably ask after this is how is this different from a community being built on Facebook? And how do you, are you setting this community apart? I'm glad you asked that question. I don't own Facebook. I don't claim to be part of Facebook. When you go into Facebook, you can create a community for free. What you can't do is say anything you want in the community. You cannot charge in the community. You can offer links to pay. You can offer links to your courses, but you're taking those people outside of the platform. Most people want to get into the platform, stay in that platform. And I offer a solution that allows people to stay in the platform. Your courses are in the platform. Your discussions, just like on Facebook, are in the platform, but you're not being poached by other companies running ads alongside your community. Your community is now private and protected. And in that scenario, you have more control. You can share inside of your community and you can build your community without restrictions. That's good to hear. So it sounds like you're creating your uh, set of clients uh, and bringing them closer to your business. And so they can have a deeper understanding of how is it that you run uh, and operate your business uh, and have educational moments where you can uh, in interact and show them potentially other products that you have. Uh, what is the commitment or what would you say to a business owner that is on the fence that would say, well, now I have to create this whole side of my business. What's the value for them in creating this or, um, infrastructure to make sure that um, they keep those clients? Make sure I understand the question. You're asking what is the advantage for a business owner to invest time and resources to build a community versus not having one? Yes. Okay. People are created for relationships. They like to connect. They like to move in groups and your competitor is already looking for ways to gather more customers into their business. And because people move in groups, if your competitor is already creating a group where those clients, those potential clients can gravitate to, they won't be coming to your business. So that's one. Two, when it comes to taking time to invest into a community, you've seen it where Publix will offer coupons. They now have an app. They now are having a newsletter. They're building a community, but they're already a giant. Look at what used to be called Winn-Dixie. In those days, they never did that. So guess who has the larger market share today? So Publix has that market share because they involve, they engage in the community. They allow for different activities outside of just selling food inside of their community. So that's two, engagement and the herd mentality. The third component in that is when your customers see that you are interested in them, then they will in turn be interested in you. You're going to have two types of relationship with your customers. You're either going to have a transactional one, which is a race to the bottom, because if your competitor offers the product for just a little bit cheaper than you, 
then that transactional relationship just shifted and you just lost that customer. When you have a premium quality relationship that is transformational, your customer doesn't mind paying a little bit more for your services. It's the same product, it's the same service, but they're willing to pay more because they feel part of the community. And this makes a very big difference, whether you're competing on a race to the bottom, who's going to have the cheapest price or who's going to deliver more perceived value. So as a business owner myself and very interested in joining this cohort, uh, how can we, uh, what would your message be for that uh, individual owner or company that is on the fence of creating this uh, and going through this program? Uh, that will help them say this is a, uh, a crucial part of my business and I should really focus here. I'm glad you asked the question. I'm going to bring up a business owner who has a business in the healthcare industry and they're currently spending upwards of $400 to acquire a client that will only give them $2,000 in revenue. So this is for an annual basis. So when you calculate the cost of just acquiring one customer for the business, your net profit becomes about $1,600 being a part of a cohort or being a being part of building a community having a community that four hundred dollars per client now gets reduced because you have clients referring clients the last time i checked for a client to refer a client is usually free so you're bringing down your ad spend the money that you'd often spend now for a business owner when you look at your marketing dollars going out the door, if you can divert a portion of that marketing dollars to establish a community one time, you're going to reap those benefits for decades to come. So you can say a three year ROI, if you take that $400 per client in three years, acquiring three more clients is $1,200, but if you can change that and reduce it to say $200, and in that three years, now instead of $1,600, you've cut that in half, where now you have clients referring clients, that should be of value from a monetary perspective in shifting your marketing dollars into developing your community. For some people, it's not that expensive to acquire clients. Some people spend more, some people spend less. Let's assume that you are spending less because you're doing the networking events yourself. When you do those networking events, half of the cards that you collect, you may not even call. And for those who take the time to call, you find yourself in a position where after you make that initial conversation, you're now hoping for a appointment. If they're not ready for an appointment, they go on the back burner. Why should they go on the back burner? Put them in the community, let them run around the community, let them experience the things that you would normally say. You want them to, to understand. And I'll use, I'll use you as a, as an example. You want somebody to, exp to un understand what their options are. Some of these conversations can be very tough to have, especially when somebody's emotionally involved in the transaction. So if you have one course that's recorded, you record it once, you put it in a community, and you let them know, hey, before we meet, can you go into the community and watch these courses or go through these videos so that they're more prepared? That just cut your real human time down so you can now interact with more people on a larger scale because they're interacting in the community where you're multiplying your time in the community so that you don't have to keep adding time in your reality. That's what I would say to individuals that are on the fence is you're buying dollars at a discount and you're multiplying your time 
with technology. That's very interesting that you can take a group of individuals, put them all into one place that you can control and give them the information at a moment's uh, notice and, and showcase and be in front of them at all times, which ultimately helps you convert more clients, keep them longer engaged with your business, and they could see you through this whole journey, right? Uh, instead of just being a one-time kind of interaction, it could be an ongoing relationship. And I think that's what all business owners strive to be in. It's create these long relationships of individuals that are starting as a uh, cold lead, become a customer, and then ultimately they become friends forever, right? And, and that's really what it sounds like this community uh, involvement is and yes it looks like it, it's going to take a lot of time up front uh, work to go through the program and have a deeper understanding of how the community works and what's your structure but it's going to pay in 10 times over because you set it up once and have it running forever so i think that's huge as a final message to those uh, listening to us what would you want to leave them with I understand that business owners are busy running their business and when you say to a business owner I want you to spend an hour a week with me for the next eight weeks and I'm teaching you how to do it I'm not actually doing it for you looks challenging because if you don't have a lot of time to start with where you're gonna get an extra eight hours over the next eight weeks to make this a reality I assure you that I want you to learn it so that even when you delegate it, that you understand what's happening in the delegation and not be broadsided by why it worked or why it doesn't work. I think the worst thing for a business owner to experience is to have success and don't know how they got there. And this eight week cohort is going to help you as a business owner not just understand how it what it takes to build a community and to go through the journey but you can also have your person that you're working with alongside with you so you're learning with them and they're the ones doing the work we're the ones teaching now we do have other offers outside of that where somebody said, Sam, I'm just one person and I don't have a, any more time to add to my plate. Can you do it for us? Yes, we do have that option outside of the cohort and we do hold you accountable uh, after the cohort as an option. You can subscribe as a, and there goes the demonstration of the community. You can join the community afterwards after the cohort to be held accountable and to be introduced to new technology because technology is always changing what i introduce you today may not be the technology that we're working with tomorrow but we're going to help you by staying on the research side so that you don't have to thank you again my name is samuel f robinson and juan del sol from next home vista let's make it a beautiful day and stay tuned for the next cohort Thank you.